A quick note before we begin, narrative writing can be fiction or nonfiction. Essentially what narrative means is that you are telling a story. In fiction, you've made that story up. In nonfiction, you're telling a real story. So if I'm writing about the trip that I took to Egypt in 2008, I may be writing narrative writing, but it's nonfiction. If I am writing about a world where dragons speak and angels sing, I'm writing a story, but it's made up. It's fiction. No matter what type of writing you do, you need to engage your audience. You need to make people want to read it because they have all sorts of other things to do. And if they don't get captivated by what you're writing fairly early on, most of the time they'll put it down and they'll go on to something else. A good hook makes your audience want to read. It makes them interested in what's going to happen. It catches their attention. And you don't have all that long to catch that attention. If it's a short story, usually you've only got a couple of paragraphs. If it's a novel, you might have a full chapter. Uh, some people will read a couple of chapters just to see if they get into it. But you need to catch people's attention. You need to catch their interest pretty early. The type of hook you use might depend on the genre that you're writing. Um, if you're writing a mystery or a suspense, often your hook will have some sort of crime committed um, in those first few pages. In a fantasy novel, uh, your hook often has some sort of magic. Your beginning um, identifies magical creatures or uh, the use of magic or something like that to make it clear that this is fantasy. These are some of my favorite examples. There are many, many more, um, but it comes from a variety of different genres. So you have I Am a Genius of Unspeakable Evil and I Want to Be Your Class President by Josh Lieb. The first sentence is, someday you will beg for the honor to lick my feet. It's kind of gross and kind of curious and I want to know who this guy is that is talking that thinks that that's going to happen like ever. Um, in the book More Happy Than Not, uh, it starts off with, it turns out the Luteo procedure isn't bullshit. And that raises questions in my mind, like, okay, well, what is this procedure? And that sounds like really sort of medical. Um, and clearly people think that it's not going to work, that it's not a real thing. So why does it? Why do they think that? And why does this narrator say that it's actually, it works? Uh, Dorothy Must Die, which I'll admit I fully picked up because of the connection to Wizard of Oz and the idea that Dorothy, you know, needed to die, starts off, I first discovered I was trash three days before my ninth birthday. And as a hook, there's sort of a, um, an empathy moment there. Uh, you picture like a little nine-year-old kid discovering, quote, discovering that they were trash, that's not really right. And it made me want to know why and who was making this girl feel this way. Um, Steelheart's one of my all-time favorite books. Uh, it's by Brandon Sanderson, and it starts off with, I've seen Steelheart bleed. And I think it's the incongruity of that that makes me um, made me interested in, in reading more. First of all, everybody bleeds, so I'm not sure why that's such a interesting thing to say. But second of all, you've got this steel heart, um, which has this idea that, that um, there's not going to be any blood because steel, you know, doesn't bleed. Um, so I wanted to know more. Uh, and then again, uh, Uglies, one of the best books I've ever writ read, um, super popular with my students, uh, by Scott Westerfeld, starts, the early summer sky was the color of cat vomit. 
and I just picture this this sky that is this really gross color like it's just such a vivid image that it caught my attention and made me want to read more notice with each of these what happened was there was something about it that I wanted to know more Beginnings in fiction, or specifically in narrative fiction, need to hook your reader in and make them want to read more. They need to introduce the setting. Where and when is this taking place? They need to introduce at least some of the characters, and usually the main character, and they need to introduce the problem that your character is going to face. So, for the hook, a good way, particularly for novice writers, to develop their skills at uh, engaging their audience is to begin with action or dialogue. Begin with your character doing something or saying something. Your characters, you want to convey their personality and their appearance through what they do and what they say, rather than giving a whole long paragraph that describes them. The setting, it should be clear at the beginning where and when it's set in broad strokes, but you don't necessarily have to have a detailed description of the tiny little town when your character is only in one part of it right now. You want to catch people's attention and make them interested in the conflict because that's why we read books is to see what problem the character is going to face and how they're going to overcome it. So you want to, in your beginning, give some hints about what that problem might be. And you want to keep the story moving. And this is true throughout the whole story, but particularly in the beginning, you want things to happen so that it's progressing and people want to keep reading. Some things you want to avoid. These super long paragraphs that people write that describe everything about the character down to the mole on their right shoulder, um, everything about their personality, what they did when they were a little kid. Uh, nobody cares about your characters yet. So that stuff might be important later on, and it's definitely better to weave it into what's going on. But right now, I need to know enough about your character that I'm actually interested in finding out what happens to the person. Likewise, you don't want to give more detail about the setting than it's necessary for your audience to be able to visualize where your character is right now. A lot of novice writers will start by describing the day, the place, the characters, the conflict in a lot of detail. And I call this word vomit. Um, don't tell me that it is Tuesday morning and you are sitting at the bus stop with your little sister and you guys just had pancake breakfast and your mom was yelling all morning because she didn't get enough sleep. I, I don't care yet. Um, have your character do something that is not just sitting at a bus stop thinking about all of the things that have happened that morning. When you're talking to your friends, usually you don't begin with a list of everything you've done up until that day. So don't give large amounts of information unless it is actually relevant and as much as possible, give that information in the context of what a character is saying or doing. Maybe as your character is talking, she tucks her curly red hair behind her ear. Now I know that she has curly red hair, but I also didn't have you tell me that it was part of what she was doing. So here is an example um, of what I see in a lot of novice writers and a way that you could improve it. Uh, instead of, it was Tuesday morning in the Henson household and Jeff really didn't want to get up. He hated Tuesdays with a passion. That was his mom's, days off, his mom's day off and she was relentless in the morning. Jeff liked to lounge about in bed, sleeping until the last possible moment, then jump up, throw on whatever clothes smelled clean from his floor, grab his backpack and unfinished homework, and book it for the bus. 
Breakfast was for losers. When his mom was home, however, she woke him early for a proper start to his day, making him shower, brush his teeth and hair, get dressed, and often sent him back to wear something, quote, less hobo, and then join her for a leisurely breakfast full of fun mother-son bonding. Today was no different, unfortunately. So in this, I have told you a bunch of information. I've given you a bunch of background information uh, about my character, but there is not really any action. There's not really any, well, there isn't any dialogue. So conveying some of that same information, but in a more engaging way, you could write, Jeff, honey, you awake yet? Jeff pulled his covers over his head. Apparently it was Tuesday. No, he replied, the sound muffled. That didn't work any better than it had any of the previous weeks. His mom opened the door and made a face. You really need to air out this room, she told the mound on the bed. And do your laundry, she added, looking at the cover clothing covered floor. She came over and pulled the covers off. Get up and get ready for breakfast, Jeffy, she said in a sing-song voice. It's family time. Jeff groaned and tried sticking his head under his pillow. His mom grabbed it and smacked him with it. And take a shower. I'll expect you down in 15 minutes, and then you can tell me how things are with you. They'd be better if you'd just let me sleep until the bus comes as usual, Jeff muttered after his mother left the room. I heard that. A couple of things to notice here. There's dialogue and there's action. And the description that is there is in the context of other things. Um, you know about the clothing covering the floor because the mom looks at it and says, do your laundry. You can tell that this has happened many times before with apparently it was Tuesday and that didn't work better than it had any of the previous weeks. So a lot of the same information is there, but it's in the context of the plot um, moving forward. few reminders. To catch a reader's attention, get right into the action. People like action. Use your hook to provoke emotion in your reader. You want to startle them or intrigue them, for example. Don't give more information than is necessary and try to weave that information into the character's actions, dialogue, and reactions instead of writing these long paragraphs of character description or background to the plot or setting. And this one's probably the most important. If your beginning bores you, it's probably going to bore your reader as well. Write something that would make you want to read this story. 